Hi, this is William, and welcome to Flyspoke. And today I want to tie a very important uh, bucktail-style fly. Um, I've taken some liberties in some of the materials and not using bucktail, substituting things like fin raccoon and uh, temple dog hair, and um, it's called a Magog smelt, and very universal fly because originally it was tied for uh, landlocked salmon, and today it's used uh, not just for the landlocks, but it's used for Atlantic salmon. And if you tie it on saltwater hooks, it can be used as a uh, striped bass fly as well. And uh, this one's on an Alec Jackson uh, um, spay hook, a nickel color spay hook in a size 3. So it's a pretty good size fly. And uh, this one here is on a Bob Viverka salar hook. A little bit smaller. Um, good fly for... Um, moderate sized water, Atlantic salmon fishing up on Gas Bay. And uh, here's a low water double, size 8. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty, it can be a, a pretty universal fly. Tie it in tandems if you want to use as a trolling fly. But it really does catch, catch fish. I'm going to tie it today on the Alec Jackson nickel, size 3 spay hook. Um, very nice hook, great curve, wonderful looking curve to the back of the hook. And uh, I'm simply going to start off with a neutral color. I'm going to use some gray color thread and um, start right towards the back here. And it's a 14 aught th thread so it is very thin um, not going to be cumbersome covering it over, but yet uh, the Giorgio Bonacci thread in the this is 70 denier is extremely uh, extremely strong. And I've stopped here right where the where the barb is. First item in is going to be some uh, nickel colored, very thin ultra wire. And because the body material I'm going to use is going to be some holographic mylar and I want to right now stop right there where the tag is going to stop and the one thing I want you to be conscious of is these hooks have return eyes and I'm going to be laying this wire as I progress forward right uh, into that uh, return eye to even out my body size Let's get it right on the correct side. There, now it's running right along, right along the hook and butting into that return eye. So I'm just going to take a couple wraps here more. And I'm just going to take the wire and I'm going to pull it fairly tight. And I'm going to make sure my first wrap is really, really spot on next to each other. And I'm pulling I'm pulling this wire reasonably taut. I want to make sure that no space occurs. Just give it a push. Now I'm going to leave this because that's also going to be my rib to protect the mylar. Second item in is going to be a teal feather for a tail. And what I do is I'm going to take a teal feather. I'm going to pull back, hold the very tip. I'm going to pull back like this. And I'm going to cut off that. I'm going to cut off that tip. Bring the feathers back. Now this, you got the curve facing up. I'm going to take it like this. And I'm simply going to make a couple of wraps here in order to just hold it down. Okay. 
and I'm just going to draw the feather, draw the feather in until it's my appropriate length. And that's a little more than I want to have, so I'll just take it off, draw more away from this side here, and replace it. You can always do that. Don't ever settle. Sit it right on top of the hook. Draw it into position. And now what I want to do is with the wire I'm going to pull my wire to the back and advance my thread. I can take off this here. And now I'm advancing my thread and at the same time I'm making sure that the wire runs right along the side of the hook to meet the return eye and the stem of the teal feather is going to run right on the top of the hook itself. What I'm always trying to be is uh, cognizant of keeping the body in a nice uniform shape. go right up and right on to the return eye. See I'm right on that return eye now. Right to there. Okay, next item is going to be that holographic mylar. And just cut a piece of your holographic long enough so that it'll go the entire distance. Now the original fly uh, doesn't call for holographic, it calls for flat silver tinsel. All I'm doing is adding a little bit of flash to it. And I'm putting this on so it's turn next to turn. get to the very back now what I want to make sure is, is that I'm completely covering and I am going to pull a little bit harder a little bit tighter on the mylar hear the mylar going through my fingers that I'm putting tension on it. The friction is rubbing through my fingers. Go ahead and tie off the mylar, bend it back and cover the, the bended the bent portion as well. I'll keep it in there nice and solid. Now I'm going to counter wrap the rib.
pull the, that to the back right at the spot where that return eye is. See right there? I bend the wire back and then I'll trim it off right there. Okay, next item. It calls for a bright red hen hackle to be put on as a throat and I'm going to use a hot red mallard feather, mallard flank feather. And again, what we do is we split down expose a tip okay and I'm gonna cut the tip off I'll take the mallard feather and I'm gonna lay it in now I'm gonna draw that slowly very slowly until I see that it's in the place where I want it to be. And you can see I have just about touching the point of the hook. It's going to give us a really nice throat and then that I'm going to trim. I'm going to trim this on an angle. I'm going to put my scissor in sideways and trim on an angle. Ramps are always your friend. And then I'll look at this, make sure it's right on the bottom of the hook. Okay. Now the next item uh, uh, that would go in usually into this fly would be some white bucktail. But I'm going to give a little more life to the fly by using some fin raccoon. This is a fin raccoon zonker strip in white. And I'm just going to take a small amount of that fin raccoon. Leave the guard hairs in if you, if you have some of the guard hairs in there. And the first thing I want to do with that fin raccoon is I really want to give it a nice brushing out. Use my fingernail and just really pull it out. <laughs> now I'm going to measure where I want it to be. Which for the white on this fly is going to be just past the tail. So I'm measuring. Grab with my other finger. Trim. It's not a lot of material that ends up on. Okay. And just flatten this out. Just give it a little bit of width. Okay. Next item calls for yellow bucktail and in this case I'm taking some temple dog and I'm going to use the temple dog with the guard hairs in again and just take a twist of the temple dog and again and you can see you see the guard hair sticking out and yellow behind it I'm going to hold very tightly and I'm really going to give it, get all that fuzz out of there. And again, I'm going to measure. And this I'm going to make a little bit longer than the white ever so slightly longer than the white. And you see I'm leaving those guard hairs be very long in the back. Measure. 
trim. this right on top of the white fin raccoon. Layer of white, layer of yellow. And the next item calls for purple. And I'm going to use fuchsia bucktail. Bucktail rattles, makes noise in the water. That's why muddlers are so popular. Salmon can feel them. So I'm going to use a little bit. Now I don't want to stack this. I want to hand an eye stack it. And I just look for it to be close. I don't want them perfectly uniform. This is going to be slightly longer than the yellow and about into the middle of where the guard hairs on the temple dog were. Again, I measure and I trim. And I put that right on top of Right on top of the temple dog. Okay. Next item, I'm taking one strip of either mirror crinkle flash in blue, or in this particular case, it's holographic, blue holographic, and I'm going to tie in one part of it there. Just bring it to the other side, tie it in, and what I want to do is just pull it, just tap it up like that so it's a little higher in the fly, right with, it'll come up right with the bucktail, like that, just grab them, and I'm going to give a little angle cut to that. Now you get a little blue flash in there. Next item is going to be peacock curl as a topping. And I have a natural curve to the peacock curl. I'm measure where I want it to be. I'm going to keep the natural curve. I have the natural curve here, like that. I'm going to bend it right on my fingernail. Put the bend right down where you're going to tie in. And I'll tie that right on top of the, uh, the bucktail <laughs> trim. Now we are back to some teal flanks and we're going to put on some cheeks. Now to make the cheeks, I take two feathers that have a similar look to them. I place them back to back so that they're the same size and I'll try to trim them down pull them down at the same time so that the tie-in location is going to be identically the same size.
just a tad bit smaller I'm going to make them cover right over everything that I put there try to have the bottom of that feather running right along the, the body Once I have the cheeks on, I'm going to uh, I'm going to tie off the neutral gray color thread. Trim out the. those teal flanks and I'm gonna run some black thread now okay so I'm gonna start my black thread now right in front on the hook itself that's the furthest forward I'm going to want to go now it's gonna create a nice size head and a good shape basically I'm working some thread up onto where I was tying. Right to that last, right to that last spot to cover up. And the last item I'm putting in here, I'm going to take a, uh, it's a jungle cock cape, and I want to just pick out uh, two appropriately sized nails for the fly. Look at them, make sure they're close in size and that they match. And I'm going to put these back to back. And then go ahead and remove out the same time so again my tie-in location is is the same side to side I run this right up the middle of the teal flank and you can immediately just trim it leave a little there to secure down Same thing on this side. And now I'll just look at the head and really shape the head and make sure everything is completely covered.
sign my whip finish. Now, and fly like this, working fly, nice streamer pattern. I would normally put at least uh, two coats of head cement, more than likely three. Oh, let's just put one on now. And then uh, if you, the first coat, I just rotate the vise a couple of times as it's drying on each coat for the beginning of the drying period and let gravity allow the head cement to dry outward. And um, Create yourself a really nice looking fly. Oh, the Magog smelt. There it is.